Hello Internet! Today I have a very interesting and a very long story about this half-dead EVGA 3090 FTV3 that gave me hemorrhoids. It all started great when one of you decided to contact me for repair and sent your device. Judging by the RIP sticker, someone had been inside of this thing before and that's not good but not always. It appears it has some aftermarket pads and it seems to have good contacts so I assume pads are not to blame. Ok, customers stated that EVGA returned the card back from the RMA due to a broken PCB. So let's take it apart and see if that claim was true and maybe owners should file a lawsuit against the company. That's right EVGA, I'm after your certified and overqualified engineers and I want to get to the bottom of this. So let's dig in and see what we find. As usual, 12 volt kilo ohms. 5.5k on 3.3 volt, 1.5k on this 5 volt rail, 2.3k on this 5 volt rail, same here, kilo ohms on 12 volt line, this end and, and uh oh, we have a short. I do apologize for my cheap Chinese multimeter that's acting up again, I can't get any solid reading, so I'll try another one. To my surprise, this meter was no better. I mean look, what in the world is going on? Do I have bad probes or this card just doesn't want to be fixed? Anyway, we have 50 ohms in memory, that's very good considering this card has 24 micron RAM chips. Otherwise I would want to see around 60 plus or maybe 15 to 20 if that was a Samsung memory. Let's check the data lines. First pair is looking more or less the same, that's good enough. Same thing on the back, looks good. Clock reference plus and minus looking good and the PEX reset is there. Ok, so we do have a short here and I imagine it's linked to the external cable over here. Let's see if the fuse is blown. And it looks like it's blown. That's great news. The bad news is that there is no previous mark of the multimeter probe suggesting that no one even bothered to test this fuse. Which means no one even tried to diagnose this card to begin with. Alright, now I gotta remove all the thermal pads and clean things up so I can have a better look at what's going on. And I'm back. Card is clean, let's have a look. I think this is how the original diagnostic was made. Certified, overly qualified technician with an electrical engineering degree has looked at this hole and call it a bust. Took a break from a hard working day and went home collecting his five figure paycheck. What am I doing with my life? In any case, uh, this looks like a dent caused by the IO shield and nothing to worry about, just a dent. Ok, so the power rail with a blown fuse should be powering a number of driver MOSFETs. Which ones? I don't know yet, so I'm gonna have to look under a microscope and see if any show any signs of damage. Sometimes you have to look really close to see the problem and it really helps if everything is super clean and very large. Looking around, I found this guy with the hole on the top. So I'm gonna have to apply some white filler and hopefully now it's fixed. This guy looks a little suspicious too. Now let's take a look on the other side and I think they're all looking okay.
So all I gotta do now is to remove our first suspect. I never bother removing anything larger than 5mm from the board without preheating station. That way I don't have to use excessive heat causing more damage. Also in this case I have to protect these electrolytic capacitors from the heat or they will explode. For that I'll be using most advanced nanotechnology available only at the certified repair centers called tinfoil. Component removal is straightforward. Apply some heat, lift the component and cleaning everything up. With the board slightly cooled down, I can verify if the short circuit went away, and it looks like it did. Take that certified electrical engineer. Since I don't have these brand new, I'll have to take one from the donor board, one of which was donated to me just recently due to a no fix. If you're a donor of this board, thank you. This country needs more people like you. With little more nano attack, to deflect the heat from the caps, off we go to get the component we need. And let's not forget about the fuse. I don't have those in stock either. In any case, new part goes back on, fuse gets replaced, card gets cooled down, so let's check and see if the short is gone. And the short is not gone. No problem. According to my electrical engineer training, if the short is not gone, I need to remove the newly installed component. So let's do that. Okay. Card is cooled down, let's check for a short circuit, and it looks like we're good. For some strange reason, when this chip is installed, short circuit comes back. And then it hit me. Since these driver MOSFETs work in pairs and are in parallel, one of the two can short the other, but not itself. So let's do something about that. Also, later I measured low resistance on the neighboring power rail, and it has around half a kilo ohm, which is really low. Taking a close look at the filtering capacitors over here, you can see, hopefully, that two caps are looking kind of bulged. So I will replace them, because I suspect they were at the breaking point, and extra heat applied earlier just finished them off sooner, I suppose. Once those were removed, we have healthy kilo ohms. 
these are the caps I'm going to be replacing and I will take them from the donor board. Hopefully they are in good condition. Caps are on. Let's double check the resistance and everything looks good. This time I get a little bit more expensive and apply Captain tape to provide better heat protection. This Captain, Cap, Cap, Captain, Captain, Captain tape is only available for highly qualified CEOs of all electrician engineers for the price that only they can afford. 20 bucks that is. With this protection in place, I will solder these components back and hopefully making this cart a little bit more alive. Okay, our driver MOSFETs are installed, let's verify that we do not have any short circuits and it looks like we do not. And then let's plug it into our Super Tester Mega Pro XL to see how many amps this car likes to eat. And as you can tell it goes into a self-destruct mode so we're gonna have to look under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why my engineering license was denied. Look at these two pads joined together. Small accidents like that can cost you an entire cart. This is why when you send your cart to me, you should expect that accidents happen and that I'm not perfect. Let's fix this little happy accident that you won't tell no one about. I later ended up removing this component because that mistake killed it. Not only the component itself, but the neighbor too. Which means I now know which two are a pair. And then I simply replaced them both. And it did not help. And then I did the unthinkable. I swapped them around. And the problem went away. Weird. Hopefully you can see that now every driver MOSFET gets warmed up the same way as the other. And that's what we want to see. Why swapping them around fixed the problem, I don't know, and at this point, I don't care. Okay, it was time to plug this card into a test rig and see if we get a picture. Everything was looking good so far, and I decided to run Firmark for maybe two seconds and see if it crashes the card. And it did. Image froze, core got cold, and we have a new problem. Card crashes under load. Man, I think I'm gonna need to spend at least 20 years in an engineering camp to solve this mystery. Anyway, we start by burning provided image to a USB thumb drive using program called Rufus. Now let's open a new drive and go inside the tiny folder. Open file called commands with a notepad and delete all of those commands except for the one line at the top. Then in our first command we tell mods to test secondary device since we plug our card in as a secondary device. The reason why it says home 455.127 is because that's where program mods is located. Everything else here is parameters for mods. Next command is to output the message on the screen. Next command will remove old log file that we're about to generate every time we run the test. And then we run the code for NVMT memory testing program, which we need to place into a home folder. Next, you can either display the log file or we can simply power off the PC and open this log file on the computer. Our newly created USB drive goes in. Mods test will fail, but it will switch to a secondary device and it will allow NVMT to run the code on the correct device.
this only took two seconds quick and easy okay so now we go into a home folder and open nvmt.log file here we can see a bunch of ones but some of them are actually not one those are the problem areas some chips show reading errors some have writing errors so we're gonna have to replace them all and with a 50 50 success rate customer agreed to pay for donor chips in advance so here we go i'm gonna steal these donor chips from my very own gigabyte 3090 aurus which i bought for repair but it ended up having a dead core so i might as well make some money out of it Okay, so uh, since the test does not really tell me on which side of the board chip went bad, I have to punish the customer by replacing both chips for each channel. You can see in this example we have same letter of every channel on both sides of the board, so that's kind of how it works for now. So I will mark every chip in question with an X of death and get on with the replacement. My plan is to preheat the board, then flip it over and deal with the chips on the back first and then I'll do the front later so let's see how that goes
OK. Chips were installed. Card cooled down. So let's check for resistances. And it looks like we have a short on the memory rail. Great. Oh, I can only guess which one of those six chips has balls bridged together. After removing some of them on the back, I found this one was likely the cause of our short. Yep, this is it. Once board cooled down, I confirmed that the short was gone. And by that time, I already reballed three chips. And I'll do the fourth one and uh, put them back on. Hard to cool down a little bit. Uh, we have 15 ohms. That's because it's still warm, so I say that's normal. Then I plugged in the card, ran the memory test, which failed, by the way. That got me so confused that I removed all those chips again, ran the test again, and the test complained about every remaining chip on the board. I thought to myself, is this going to be one of those videos where you bring me your half-dead card and I just finish it off at no cost. And then it hit me. I think this board is simply too large and conducts a lot of heat. So I decided to resolder the chips again, this time with a little bit more preheating temperatures. And finally, I put it into Windows, which says that there are no problems with the device. Pretty weird. Anyway, after rebooting the computer, I loaded the memory with the OCCT. No crashes there. Quickly ran Firmark for a couple of seconds as well as the Valley and it did not crash. Now all that's left is to assemble the card, but I ran into a problem with old pads. They were dried out, so I had to replace them with the new. Applied new paste and put all the screws back on, finding an extra screw laying around for some reason. I later found out that this screw went to the back of the board, but the card was already packaged for shipping. Hopefully owner won't mind putting that screw back in by themselves. And now the moment of truth. Firmark is running for a few minutes, showing no signs of artifacting or freezing. Temperatures are stable. Superposition is flying very smoothly. Valley looks as beautiful as ever, and my butt was hurting as never before sitting on it for so many hours, giving me hemorrhoids. Thanks, EVGA. I knew I could count on you. With that said, I hope you guys have learned something today. If you care about my opinion on this card, it's rather positive. The PCB is very well made. Pads are not falling off. Cooling design was very well planned and I would highly recommend this card. Oh, and if you need a repair, please follow the link in the description. And that's it for you today. Feel free to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to comment below and I'll see you later. Goodbye.